Ja. Ook die er wel een beetje bang voor je is. Ik weet niet of hij was met je Ja, ja, ja. Zeker. Ja, die durf ook nooit. Die ga ik wel vertellen dat ze voor in. Ja, een beetje eenzaam.
So music is quieting now. We're going to keep up. We're going to start. So my mind works like this. It's more like a, in, in a roundabouts and curves and not in boxes, square things. So this is my my thing. I, I welcome you here at the mic drop of the Digital Society School. So uh, for those who haven't attended here, welcome for your first time. Thank you. For those who have come more often, thank you again for coming here. And um, we will explain later what the mic drop is all about. Uh, but first, um, I'd like to, yes, make sure that you know that you're at the Digital Society School. Uh, we have started last September, and this is the learning, op uh, learning community. Um, we're there to integrate the digital technology in society, try to have positive impact on business and society. And I am Asia Kran. I'm track owner of one of the tracks that we have here at the Digital Society School. It's called Digital to Physical. 
And we research actually the blend of the digital and physical world and how it impacts our society. We do that with multiple learners. Uh, they're here at the back, um, very busy uh, working on their projects. And later on, they're also ready to share you some, uh, some demos of prototypes they have been working on so far. So later on, after the mic drop, hang around, have some drinks, and um, go and talk to them, hear what they're working on currently. Um, then, yes. What's a mic drop? What's it all about? So it's the action of dropping when you're making a statement, a strong statement or a series of statements. Yes, so that's what we're going to have tonight, so this afternoon. And we're um, arranging these mic drops as a masterclass for our learners and for all of our DSS community. So welcome to get inspired, to interact, and to provoke yourself and one another uh, by, to think differently, yes, to change perspective. We're having a lot of fun stuff coming up as well uh, here at the Digital Society School. So check our event calendar, it's also on the website. Um, we have this month the opening specula Speculative Futures of Amsterdam and also in June the UX camp. And in June also another workshop visualization with R for beginners. It's a really interesting course. Um, as well as AI for beginners with R. And 19th of June, there's our showcase. So our learners who are currently working on the projects will showcase what they have been working on uh, together with the partners. Um, so be there and pick the fruits, get the insights from what they have been uh, accomplishing in all those 20 weeks that they've been working on it. Yeah. And we're hiring. So there's this job position and we're hiring learners. So go to LinkedIn, go to our website. Spread the news. Uh, if you want to become part of our team or know people who are, let them know. Yes, waiting for the picture. <laughs> it's coming, it's coming. Then can I have a peek? Yes, okay, okay, okay. So it's almost about time to drop, but let me tell you something more. Because this special mic drop is in collaboration with ThingsCon because we as a track digital to physical, we are very much inspired by the ThingsCon community and what they are aiming for and wishing for. Uh, they're aiming for a responsible and human-centric internet of things. And that is, of course, very much related to digital and physical things. So that's why we uh, especially invited Iskander. Uh, and I'm very happy that you'll be joining us today. Yes, because... <laughs> That is, that is you, yes. <laughs> so today, yeah, we have Iskander Smith. He's a visiting professor and PhD candidate of Delft University of Technology. And of also very much involved with the Internet of Things Amsterdam, but that might have been obvious. Um, he's also lab director of Cities of Things Delft Design Lab. Uh, so very broad, interested, very much involved with things and digital society. So we wanted to invite you to share your insights uh, on how our interactive, like how our interactions with things and the, uh, the change of our behavior by that interaction of things uh, affects us and affects society. Uh, because I think it's really important that we, um, uh, that, like the thi that we're going to design things that really affect uh, our behavior and also other things uh, that we have good impact on the sustainable development goals and I hope that your story will inspire us how to do that and how to be aware of it so that's why we're aiming for tonight for this today okay time to drop a mic yes so heading over <laughs> not yet sir. not yet all right, all right. The uh, other device, yes. yes <laughs> and I have to switch. Let me first. Okay. So, mouse. Okay. okay. Well, thanks, Asia, for the. Asia? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Asia. For the. Uh, how to pronounce it? I know you how to write it and to type it, but it's always. Uh, 
Uh, thanks for the invitation, all, all the others. Um, and, and really, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, we'll see if we really I, I met up the, the expectation to have this inspiration for sustainability or just some warnings for what happens with these kind of new type of things. We'll see. Um, yeah, I, I keep standing here. Is that okay? Yeah. Uh, so my talk's about things that predict and um, uh, yeah, let me, yeah, I, I was always already introduced by, uh, so yeah, so uh, next to, uh, to being organizer of things called here in the Netherlands, uh, also running some other events like uh, Behavior Design Meetup and uh, running uh, the Innovation Lab of, uh, of an internet agency here in Amsterdam. Uh, but my main focus now in this year started uh, uh, the research on this topic. Uh, things, uh, into, uh, things that predict uh, at TU Delft, at in Delft University of Technology. And I will t tell a little bit more about that. Uh, first, a little prom promo. Next week we have a, a ThingsCon Salon. We do that uh, every now and then, once a month, month, two months. And next week we will have one on this uh, topic. Uh, we plan to do it around Easter to resurrect uh, IoT gadgets, gadgets that get bricked because of the uh, the digital thing was uh, was broken, like the little printer or the mess tech. Maybe you know they, these guys. Uh, I also have, I should have, uh, uh, very fast. I have a new a new one that it also bricked last uh, last two weeks ago. But I I will. It's still working, and it's nice because it's. It's a, it's a kind of an automatic thing, but this is kind of a nice yeah, robot. But he also, the... And then these, these, these things get uh, useless. So we try to resurrect with some people that next week in... Uh, it's in Rotterdam, so you have to drive to Rotterdam, but okay. Uh, check out the website if you want to know more. Um, so this talk, I want to, uh, to talk about the context of things, things as, and cities of things, and things as citizens, that the research is about uh, in Delft, what I'm doing. And then I will dive a little bit in what is a thing now, a contemporary thing, uh, but especially looking into things that predict and the relation that, that of the meaning that has in the way we relate to the world. Uh, so that's what we call predictive relations. Um, and enough, I hope, enough time to discuss. Uh, so sometimes I will go a little bit faster, but uh, then you can maybe later ask me specific things on slides that I skipped through. Um, the program we have in uh, the research program we have in Delft is called Partnerships in Cities of Things. We started that uh, two years ago almost when I started uh, as visiting professor, and uh, I do that together with Elisa Giagardi and some, uh, and we have two other researchers uh, involved. Maria Lucia, she's now in the uh, AI for tech in uh, in Delft and Nasli did it as a part time research and she's but she's mainly working here so uh, at the HVA uh, now or and at the, at, the, at the master digital program still but she's still also involved in this things as citizens uh, research program sometimes um, and we work together with AMS that's uh, yeah, now he's getting a <laughs> that's that's in the, uh, it's kind of like like a little pet so it's really a, a, also annoying sometimes. Um, uh, AMS is, uh, is an institute here in, in, uh, in Amsterdam that's really looking into the, the smart cities and the urban development. Uh, and the first research here was, was with them together. Um, and to give a little bit of context of what the lab, or the Connected Everyday Lab, where Elisa Chicardi and, and I uh, are connected to, connected to uh, yeah, it won't fall off. It's <laughs> um, Hey Factor, no, that's not working. Yeah, hey Factor, <coughs> go to sleep. Not now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this little movie gives a little idea how we think about this kind of connected things and how they work together. So, one one minute. Super. The sounds working. Nope. Sound. Sound. Sound.
Okay. To split an idea what happens when all these things start to, to, to speak to each other, but also start to reasoning and start to do stuff and maybe not always draw the right conclusions. Um, so, but this is kind of things we, we do also in the lab, so thinking about the future of these kind of connected things and what it can mean for, for, this, um, for the world we live in. Um, yeah, and AMS and the robots, we're not really that involved in this project, but this is what, uh, what here is happening with AMS, and we're really looking into the next phase of this research with some master students and stuff to, to see if we can make a living lab with these kind of things. So uh, that's why I mentioned them here. And also the thing, this is more like a, a lab for master graduation students that we're looking into these cities of things and things of citizens. And we had a couple of them like Louisa who did really look into a new model for things and citizens. You can look it up later. Um, and, uh, and this is a Chinese uh, uh, student that really looked in what, what it means if, if we have all kind of mobility of the future where cars don't have to be a kind of a safety construction because no, no, no car will ever crash. So we can make it more like into a maker space for people that want to be a, a maker uh, with their cars um, to, to make it, to put it very shortly, but, but real. Um, and this is an important uh, maybe <coughs> paper we wrote, uh, Luci Marie Lucci wrote mainly about some future scenarios with all these kind of things like uh, automatic, uh, automatic uh, cleaning robots or delivery pods or other stuff and, and really looking into what that means for uh, our relation to that. And, uh, yeah, we'll tell a little bit more about that later. Um, and the context of, of, of these connected things in the cities of things is this movie, uh, probably maybe it's a couple of years old, so maybe you have seen it before, uh, but it still always remains very, in very uh, funny, but also very illustrative of what will happen if all the objects in the street, all the things will become more connected to each other and can and know what they do together uh, and how this, our, our streets will look like. Um, and also, you can also imagine that our streets will will change in, in how it will look. Now, now you have this this crossing uh, crossing still there, and these these uh, traffic lights, and well, that's a little bit not so necessary anymore, of course. Yeah, um, yeah, the dumb squares li looking like this maybe now also. <laughs> well, this is not uh, not there yet, but uh, but well, we're coming there. Uh, I think this movie is now two years old, maybe so. In, in maybe two another two years, it's uh, it's it's reality. No, I don't know, but um, but that's what what I'm really looking into. Things that have their own agency, that take their own decisions, that that use uh, intelligence they have, that use the input uh, input of of sensors and stuff, uh, and start to do their own things. And and in seconds, in seconds step, they start to they they con conversate with us, confer. Uh, have conversations with us as hum humans and see if they if we do if they do the right thing. That's that's what I'm uh, really looking into. Um, and yeah, what the, the role is of these things in uh, as they become citizens uh, in this uh, this this overlapping field between IoT, intelligent city and agency. Um, as a context, we, we look at the smart city here as a different from different aspects. So the smart city as a dashboard from data, the smart city as an adaptive infrastructure, or more like the cities of things. Um, they will be all true, and there's some of them are already true, but they will uh, yeah added together. Uh, this is an example of this uh, this data data dashboard that you have. Of course, you have all these sensors now of, of you uh, you uh, yeah becoming more and more. Uh, common to have sensors that, that measure all kind of quality of the, the, the air and you can make dashboards like this or people can make dashboards like that. Or these kind of adaptive lighting systems in, uh, this, in this case in, uh, in Amsterdam. This is an experiment that I don't know if it still is running, but they, they try to follow around people and try to, to adapt the lighting programs. Um, and, and, and we focus on, on the future where the things become more like the, the objects that are intelligent and smart. And, and they, they have a kind of a social practice, just like so, a little guy like this. Um, and they, they have a kind of a way that they're not being controlled anymore, but more like, more like people governed. And they have a kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, we have a different kind of ruling, democratic systems, that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, this is, a, this is a nice movie of this, this same delivery pod. This is a company, Starship Technologies, they call themselves. Um, and they do a, 
uh, an experiment now with uh, of DoorDash, or DoorDash does an experiment here, and DoorDash is the takeaway thuis bezorgd of uh, of the, the United uh, States. <laughs> and um, yeah, this is a journalist that wants to break it open and try to find out what will happen if he if he run into these kind of guys or girls. I don't know how you say that. But this is uh, this is what what happening now, and 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 it raises a lot of questions. And it, you see that also uh, Arizona, for instance. Uh, gave kind of a uh, regulation that th these these uh, these kind of things have the same rights as pedestrians now on the on the on the on the, on the sidewalks, uh, and on the other hand, people are trying to kick them and try to break them open. So really looking into what is the relation to these kind of things, and that's what we're interested in in this research program. And it's not only in the states, but I've I recently ran into this uh, this guy. I think it's al already half a year now in uh, happening and it's very slow and very thing but this is a cleaning robot uh, that's uh, uh, that's going around on its own in in the Rotterdam station and it's and much, big, much bigger than this these little guys that you saw before um, so I, I didn't try out what happens when I was standing before that and maybe I should do that next time uh, but I was in a rush for to getting my train so and I saw so run over a tourist almost in Schiphol. Yeah, yeah, the same one. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's the, that's our future. <laughs> but you have to be careful as a human. In Amsterdam. Yeah, <laughs> always. I forget. Um, so we really want to discuss this kind of thing. So we made a kind of a, a workshop kit that we used for this kind of things and uh, yeah, look into different worlds like delegation relationship I'm not going to into details you can uh, let me know if you want to know more we did that as a, at a couple of with students but also in border sessions and uh, and stuff so it really provoked discussions about how we relate to these kind of things so that was my introduction about the research program um, uh, but also it tells a lot of, a lot about what we are doing and and what this is all about so things that predict um, So the question, one of my questions is, in my research, is what will happen for, an is, uh, yeah, what will happen with our, in our relation to things, but also what does that mean for designers, what does it mean for the designers of these things? Uh, so, um, oh. at first we have to look at things. Things become more uh, like complex things. It's not really an object anymore or a, a simple thing. It's really a thing that, that has a lot of intelligence in it, like this Nest uh, thermostat. And I had a uh, graduation student a, couple, uh, a year or two years ago uh, that makes made a kind of looked into what would an uh, intelligent barbecue look like. And that was his question. So he really looked into what does it mean to be a barbecue master. Uh, you have to be the master of the party. So he really looked into the human aspect of that. Uh, he tried to map all the things that are involved in making a nice barbecue with uh, with the the flow of, of the use but also the all the the uh, accessories you need the things you need and also the data so he's also <coughs> looking at all the data points and and really approaching this as more like an ecosystem of things and really looking into what can we do to make it more intelligent or what could intelligence data stuff help here so we find out that uh, he w was really also doing research through prototyping, so I really start making prototypes right away. And this was one of his prototypes to measure the, the thickness of the meat. So this is a tongue that you can use to, and this, this data is put into this, this other uh, prototype of an existing barbecue with some measuring of temperature. And he find out that with these three data points, so measuring of the temperature of the air and the grill and the thickness, he could make a kind of a prediction or an anticipation, that's a kind of a uh, uh, semantic uh, thing, uh, of when the meat is ready to uh, to be consumed or the first step to let uh, get it out of the barbecue. Um, and well, that was more like a set that you can add to your existing barbecue. But the main thing is this, uh, this, this hour class, so you can you can also use it for, for, for like me, vegetarian people, for eggplants and stuff. But uh, yeah, you have to decide for yourself where you, 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 your ideal moment is. So it's not that he <coughs> predicts it very, very precisely, but he really was looking into a way to, to have a, a thing that works together with the human uh, cook. Um, 
but at the same time, at 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 the moment that you, well, you get a kind of a, a range that that should be a good a good uh, good taste, and then you decide to turn it around and you let the meat rest in case of meat, and that is also a data point. So you t start to building up a profile that makes your our class more and more personalized for yourself. So that was the that was the idea of this this product that it, this this uh, barbecue set it became more and more intelligent and became more and more smart by, while using it. Um, so I really looked into this is a, a drawing he made and how to relate how to re how how do we, how do we relate to these kind of products. So uh, this is a model that uh, from a paper from Nasli. Uh, the roles of data and product as agents how is what is the product doing as an agent for you as a human so it can be a collector of data it can, and 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 you uh, and, and you have your your own decisions mainly but it's, uh, or it can be an actor on its own it starts to act on its own uh, or it's more like creative or it, it even starts to make new uh, concepts and new ideas um, and then and, then, and yeah it's a kind of a level what kind of what kind of relationship you have, you have. and he, he designed it he, he designed it somewhere here uh, as an actor slash collector so you have to do a lot of yourself um, but you can also choose to make it more there you have this tune oven maybe you know that one uh, that's an oven that you put your pizza in and you, the pizza the oven takes a picture and it just goes start baking this this this, uh, this, this pizza or whatever it is uh, so it really this is really more like an, uh, an actor uh, that you don't have to do anything yourself. So that there's uh, there lies a lot of possibilities to make choices here. That's an interesting. Uh, that's the I think the interesting thing here. Um, and it's also interesting to see how these products change. So this uh, this barbecue, you can imagine that every time that data is added in the the one barbecue that you have bought, it also can connect to a cloud. Uh, not all the time, maybe, but sometimes. And all these barbecues together make a better or inter more intelligent or more smart barbecue. So every time you buy a new barbecue, the barbecue is more intelligent than the barbecue you bought before. So what will happen to the experience of the product? What will, what will be the product of the fu future? Will it be a fixed thing or will it be more something that changes all the time? Um, and that's an interesting thing that I think is, uh, is really the, uh, one of the key elements here. So... Um, and these, these things become like platforms for data, for services, for other things, the physical products, they have conversations, it's more than just a screen, it's also very much more like touching or conversations and, uh, and they're really smart and context aware. So these social entities that things become uh, are the, the, yeah, the, the starting point of the, the, the research uh, that I do. Um, and so data, data enabled artifacts with self-performing capabilities. Um, that's, that's what, what's really kind of starting point. And, and what, what I really like is the concept of, of this, uh, this book. So <coughs> really into the, the new contemporary things. This would, is really an interesting thing to look at, I think. It's, uh, it's called, they, they call it changing things or fluid assemblages. Uh, and they say that things are becoming more like an unstable condition. That uh, uh, it's not only a thing that's become more intelligent based on the data, but it's also changing all the time. It's becoming only at the moment that you use it uh, in a kind of a certain context that it that it gets its uh, its uh, yeah its form, its 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 function also. Um, even maybe its form in the future. So uh, that's that's also getting back to that barbecue example, of course. So. And now, and that's the third, this next step, is when we add knowledge that you don't know as a, yeah, as a user anymore. So if what, what happens when these things start to predict? If they know more than you know by just using it. Um, that's what I start, use, start calling things that predict. And uh, yeah, you have, of course, all kind of things from a uh, from long time ago that, that do a kind of prediction, but that's a little bit different than what I mean. But it's a nice picture. Um, a barometer does, of course, use kind of uh, information, uh, translate information that you don't, yeah, you cannot see yourself or feel yourself uh, into a kind of another way of, uh, of knowledge, another, another type of knowledge, like the weather. Um, 
And I use this this little drawings a bit on to to explain. Hey, so the the the, us the usual products, just a normal product, a physical product, or whatever, something that 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 yeah, that has a kind of an interaction if you pick it up or something. Um, yeah, you expect a kind of use. So if you take a, a get up a, a yeah something, then uh, then it will try. It, it will behave like something, and and by doing that multiple times, you get a kind of a an expectation there. You have a kind of a mental model of the thing that 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 you are st starting to use. Um, and now we're adding this digital products, this products that has a kind of intelligence, like this Nest thermostat and that kind of stuff. Uh, and they they create a kind of a digital twin. They they often call it. So that's more like a, a representation in a digital cloud that's based on your profile. That's based on maybe intelligence from. From 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 earlier use, uh, and that's m more your reference point to uh, the mental model. And uh, if you d design it well, then you can understand that digital model also. That's an interesting. That's already a kind of a, a challenge, but uh, yeah, that's what's happening now. And what what will edit will be added even is this predictive stuff. So th this was not the digital twin is not really about prediction. It's more like a digital representation of a profile of a product in the cloud. But if this Nest thermostat, as an example, if it knows, if it takes it's re all the uh, behavior of all the other Nest thermostats, including the weather, including all the other stuff, and start to predict what will be, would be the best temperature of this moment, and also start to act on that, um, then it will be a different kind of product. And you don't have, you, you don't start your, here, here still is a kind of, uh, you start your own action and, and a reaction, but but at that moment, uh, the system is ruling the world and, you, and, and it starts communicating back to you, well, this is what I think is now the best thing to do. So uh, are you, did you, do you agree or don't, don't you agree? That's a bit, uh, bit what's happening then. Um, so that's the whole thing about these predictions. And predictions is, of course, nothing, uh, nothing new. Uh, we all do predictions all the time. Uh, if we live, we cannot do it without. So. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not going into this, but you have you can look into what what predictions is is also just a word with all kind of synonyms, and you can map them in a different way of uh, of of looking in. Uh, are they really uh, yeah based on something that's more like a prophecy, like something someone else is saying something about an in uh, in a more intuitive way, or is it more like really factual based and based on yourself, or or based on a lot of other people's like foretelling forecasting. So re this is a model that I'm just work in progress. But want to connect to some technical uh, technolo technologies that we that we use and we will be using. Um, and yeah, well, this is just some first feral thoughts and um, I'm not going too deep into this now. Um, and also not in this, but if you look into the nest, you can you can think about well, if you have a kind of a instinctive way of, of, of operating, then it will just try to grab a little bit of what, what's happening in the house and then start to do something. Um, on the other hand, if it uses all kind of data and all kind of uh, factual things on the weather and, and what all the other people have done, it will have a different behavior. So it really defines the way it will behave and also how we relate to it. So this is what things can change when there's predictions, but there's another aspect and that's what how we relate to these kind of things. What will it mean for us as a, as a human uh, for how we look at to, to the world, if we have all these kind of things that predict, and and we think that these things are smarter than us, like we do now with the bioradar. If we think, if we now look at the bioradar and we see that it rains, we we, we expect that it rains, and if we look outside, it doesn't rain. So w who is in charge here, the the prediction or the thing? Um, so that's what I'm really interested in. So the predictive relations, we have things, we have heavy things, and how we, we look to these things, uh, how we yeah, understand the world. Um, and there's one uh, thing that's called technology mediation, a concept that's, that's used a lot by uh, te 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 uh, technology philosophers. And, uh, uh, and one of them is uh, Peter Paul Verbeek, and he made this little animation about what that means, so it's also I'll show that. To How to understand the relations between humans and technologies? 
it seems obvious to make a radical split between human subjects on the one hand and technological objects on the other. Humans have freedom, intentions and try to understand the world, while things are mute and passive, objects to be used or studied. But this separation of humans and technologies leads us astray if we want to understand the role of technologies in society and our everyday lives. Typically, technologies are not our world, but rather connect us to the world. When we use them, they help to shape our relations to our environment. A smartphone, for instance, is not just an object that we interact with. It connects us to other people, to the news, to theaters and restaurants, to our work. It is not a neutral tool, but it organizes how we perceive and experience things and how we behave. It distracts us and unites us. It brings new norms and etiquette. And it changes friendships and love relationships. In doing so, technologies are not even just in the middle, between humans and their world. In fact, they help to shape who we are and what the world is for us. Smartphones change how attentive we are as discussion partners, and sonograms change the fetus into a potential patient. This is what can be called technological mediation. How do technologies do this? The North American philosopher Don Eide has investigated how technologies play a role in human world relations, ranging from being embodied, we do not look at our glasses, but rather through them, and being read, a thermometer indicates a temperature by showing you a number that you have to interpret, and being interacted with, you interact with an ATM to get money, to being at power. Yeah, he goes a little bit further, but uh, I, I stop here because I think it's interesting for me in, in this research to look at what does it mean, what does these predictions, is this a new way of, yeah, is it the same level as this embodiment or whatever, or is it more like a different angle? So that's what one of the things that I'm, uh, I'm looking into. Um, so, yeah. These, these things start to predict stuff and you start giving our uh, anti anti anticipation on what uh, uh, on situations that we that we are doing and what is interesting is that in this world of these complex things these changing complex things that are the, that complex that we don't understand them anymore on their own because they're really these things so the more the complex the thing becomes the more we need these predictive relations but also the more, more that we have these predict relations as uh, these predictions as a kind of a part of these things, we will also depend on these relations to understand the world. So it has two sides of the of the medal. Um, and so, what will happen? Uh, you ca you cannot see it already in a little bit in in kind of way. Auto autonomous systems are now using simulations to to let us understand what they do. Uh, this is a, a little bit older, I think, Tesla, but uh, the Teslas are using these kind of screens that they put all the other things that they see, of the not the, that the Tesla sees with all its sensors, like a car, but also some other um, things uh, into the screen to, to let you know what the, what the Tesla knows, so that you can have a kind of a relation, unless, yeah, you cannot even understand it anymore. So... Um, the question is, what does it mean for the human agency if these things become like a, f uh, uh, yeah, become like a really predictive thing? Uh, another example here uh, from a from a project student from a couple of years ago that made also for a self-driving car a system that you put your hand on and you can feel what the car will becoming will start to do and you can interfere. That was his his idea. You can change his uh, the behavior of your car or stop it. Uh, but you first have to understand it. You first have to understand what what means, what does, it, what what is the car thinking. So for, yeah, looking at this this way, what 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 will it mean for products? What will it mean for the designer? I I spoke to a couple of designers uh, a couple of weeks and really look into what kind of things uh, they think is is happening and changing here. And I will not take everything out but a, a, a couple of things that I find find interesting too because we also are here in the design uh, environment uh, so design practitioners uh, from different areas uh, I ask them from really IOT designers and product designers 
to more digital designers um, that really all, all looking into this product service system. Product, I see, typo, sorry. Um, and they're really thinking, uh, first, at first, yeah, predictions are, and predicting is really kind of a design activity at, at the beginning. So you're always trying to make some design predictions, predictions if you make designs. So, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's, that's kind of integ integrated part, of course. But if you're really starting to thinking uh, through, and I also have a designer from TomTom, Tom, for instance, really we're, we're talking about how uh, a, a wrong prediction of, of certain information is really de yeah, degrading the trust of a product. So you can lose trust in a, in a prediction very, very fast. So you really have to be sure that it will be right, the right prediction. Um, and what I've, I really think interesting and also showed a little bit in the examples before is that the customer journey we say yeah, we start to we start to use something and it will react on something and but with these predictions it could be turning around it could be just presenting a way of acting and you and you have to start commu commu communicating with the thing and start to make <laughs> choices based on that so it really changes the way things behave but also how we design of course for that so. Um, so that's a bit what uh, what is my, uh, my 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 statement here also as a conclusion yeah, uh, or as a, uh, almost conclusion. And so these these interactions really uh, yeah change a different different design shape uh, for for the designers if these prediction relations start to interfere with the way things will be working. Um, and I thought it was nice. I don't know how time wise we are. I had a small example of some 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 project a project that was made here we did here with the students of the di digital design uh, uh, master uh, digital design master on 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 this predicting bike a bike that predicts uh, or a bike that 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 is become like a yeah partner they say and they made a nice a nice movie so. This, um, this movie and they're really looking into how this this bike will take a role in the relation of the 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 yeah the the owner and also his community around him so they have made one uh, one example where the bike is more like a herd like a yeah how would you translate herd but how it helps you as a as a person to to find other people to help you guide your way be safe when you go home bike perspective.
So here the bike is really a, a helpful, helpful partner indeed. Um, it still it still is helping you and adapting to you. Um, and as an example, we're working with Info for OV feeds. Uh, they're doing a lot already in doing print predictive maintenance, looking into what a bike can give them uh, information and start to planning the 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 maintenance that's done and maybe in the in the future even start to planning the uh, the real schedules but the next phase next or the next step would be that you think about what would it be if this bike that has all these sensors uh start to uh yeah to become more like the taking the lead in how you experience the city <coughs> as, a, as a biker um and well that's an interesting question so I want to end with this uh, this little guy, and maybe it's nice that you also had, of course, uh, Obama. This is another American uh, mic dropping thing, but a little bit different. Maybe you know this, uh, this. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. <laughs> so maybe, maybe to, to end this, uh, there is maybe also a world that he doesn't mention that are the unknown knowns, so the things, that, the things know sir, that we don't know. And what does that mean for us? That's maybe uh, a translation of this, uh, this mic drop. And now I have to... Yeah. This is a longer version of the same. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, what's, what's Let's the, what's pick the, up the mic the new, uh, for some discussion, yeah, exactly. some questions. Yeah. Um, so, thank you for this story. Very inspiring. Mm -hmm. And yes, there were some good examples and good context that you gave, and a lot of insights that we want to go deeper in, like uh, nice books to read and yeah, yeah. papers. So, thank you. We can all uh, see it back here in the video, so if it goes too fast, you can uh, check it later online. Um, but I want to open up the floor. Is there anyone who has a question, a pressing question now for Iskander? And where's the, ah, there's another mic. So I'll give you this one back. Yeah. And, um, yeah? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll ask you a question uh, about uh, barbecue. Mm -hmm. An other word for barbecue is uh, the male kitchen. <laughs> Um, was it tested uh, its use? Did men actually like it? Digital barbecue. Well, he did. He, he did really not. I think he's not in the end came to so far. It was a uh, graduation student, so he didn't really plan it to go to the market and did all that testing. He did some small testing, of course, in his own in own thing. He was really looking in what is the role of this barbecue in this in this whole context of barbecue, and that it not becoming your taking over your role as the master of the barbecue that was really his uh, his point but uh, no it isn't really tested that yet uh, in that much so i cannot say maybe, oh, but because I, the I, background of your question maybe that's interesting my profession is in yeah. action design and yeah. i look into behavior mm -hmm. and what would people do would i like it would i use it yeah. or, and uh, i have I'm just asking if People, uh, especially men, would like to use it. <laughs> I would be because I, but I'm not that big a barbecue. So, but because they don't want to delegate this, uh, this yeah. important. Decision. They, they want to be in control. Yeah, yes. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, but it's a good question, and, and it's more broader than not for the barbecue. From how much do we want to delegate to this, to these things, to these machines, yeah. and uh, um, yeah, that's 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 the one of the main things. So. Um, uh, the first part is that you, that's what I try, uh, it, it may be, barbecue is not uh, maybe the most complex thing, so uh, you don't need those predictions maybe uh, that much, How, however, meat, meat cooking can be quite complex, I, I don't know, especially for someone who's vegetarian, but um, on the other hand, it also can take away this agency, if you really only depending on this stuff and it's and, and that's what we see happening of course uh, in all kind of uh, fields that's that's there can be points that it's that's it's counter counterintuitive counter yeah so i think that's a good question what what will what do we want 
Uh, but are we actually going to do it? Yes. Hmm? But yeah. are we actually yeah. going to do it? Yeah. Um, There's a lot of eth ethics uh, discussions also about it, and now who is in control and what, whatever, and that kind of stuff. And that, that sounds, that I don't make it important. I think it's, it's kind of a key here. Um, and this is, yeah. Guys, is, is it really learning, listening to me, or is it really, and, and who, and what, what's happening with all the data? And uh, you can, can go in that kind of discussions too, but, uh, <laughs> but more interesting is in the first place, or is what does it do with our own agency or feeling of agency? Yeah. Um, when I first saw the, the movie um, with the cars on their own, mm -hmm. and what I missed was the interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, what people tend to do, uh, they create what we call elephant path. And that I found interesting uh, when you look at the bikes, the same thing is going to happen. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's a kind of uh, the same thing that leads to elephant path will to uh, lead into uh, bike behavior and community behavior and I, I'm, I'm trying to imagine what it would mean if the, the, the bike um, get more of control and I can uh, communicate with other mm -hmm. bikes around me. Yeah. You can already, I don't know, yeah, sorry. And, 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 and I was very interested in the, the kind of patterns you will see from that, but of yeah. course that needs a lot of testing. Yeah, well I have two thoughts here. The first, the elephant, elephant path is a nice example that we have now all these elephant paths that are created by Google or the other Tom Toms <laughs> and stuff because they predict the, sm the, the fastest yes. routes and everyone is going that route. So is that our new, who is making these elephant paths now? Uh, and the second thing is, we also really looking in what is the role of technology here and Elisa Chicardi especially is looking into, they have also made a a project resourceful aging where we really not trying to make a technology solution but uh, but adding some technology to understand what people are doing and then creating other type of solutions really using it in a different way not as a solution but more like a conversation or like ethnocra oh, ethnographical mm -hmm. thing to uh, yeah to understand what's happening and there that's also a good good thing to 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 start using this kind of things for but yeah there's a lot lot of i yeah for me i'm now almost a year in this pro pro project and I finally start a little bit to understand what I'm doing. And the next three years I hope that I will get some real answers to this kind of things. But, yeah. Someone who likes to contribute. Yeah. My name is Rebecca Brewer and I'm a researcher in the Fashion uh, Research and Technology Lectorate mm -hmm. of the Hogeschool. Um, and I think that uh, clothing is a is or are very special things mm -hmm. and uh, my question is twofold on the one hand i would like to ask you whether you think that your thinking about things could be valuable for thinking about clothing uh, as special things i mean textile integrated mm -hmm. technology mm -hmm. clothing yeah. uh, and on the other hand do you know of any uh, people that are specifically looking at the uh, clothing as fashion thing mm, yeah yeah both um well i'm thinking how this we are this uh, clo yeah, clothing is just another way another thing that you use and that happens and there, there are some examples like the google is doing this project your car but it's really more like a, a remote control and there are some other things that uh, and here i work together with the digital life lab where you have this touch this touch uh, sleeves where we really try to make interaction but it's not really uh, integrating yet in the, the whole system. Um, I, I know that Adwan is doing some, some research in, uh, in, in Ghent now. I don't know what exact topic is, but it should be some. And um, yeah. Uh, ooh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, in my, <laughs> I take no risk here. Um, so yeah, I have to think about, I can find some specific examples there. But yeah, it's really, you have this, this this clothing that become more intelligent, more adapting to your to your body, and maybe changing behavior, changing characteristics about uh, based on temperature or sweating or whatever, uh, uh, and that can of course lead also in this kind of things. How can it start to use uh, start to go together? Mm. 
Yeah, I haven't haven't pr and now a, no. a, a good example ready, but uh, if I find one, I will. No, thank you. It's uh, I think clothing and you know in the yeah. future will change yeah. how we relate to many things. Yeah, yeah, definitely. from our yeah. bodies, emotions, yeah. Yeah. identity, yeah, yeah, relations. Yeah, we've got a lot lot of concepts where you can feel stuff and yeah. and do stuff, and that's that's the first start. When it, it is not really close, but uh, I think of uh, Google Glass. It's not a glass, but uh, that are people who think it's useful, but I think it's a flop. It's difficult to mm -hmm. think of something that is useful and not think about uh, 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 from the technique, but from the user. And Google did not think of the user, I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. It's going. It's going the good way. <laughs> it's going on. Yeah, and I, you can say they did. They did. Yeah, they did a lousy job in the beginning. But on the other other hand, I had a Google Glass, of course, and tried it, and it was really bad. But on the other hand, their approach was just throw it into the market and see what happens and did people understand but there yeah it, it, it yeah they didn't really take it uh, the control on its own to really iterate on that so it, it's get a little bit the dorky thing but um, yeah but I think there will be there are next iterations that are becoming more fashionable things and yeah hmm? but is it yeah. Uh, just just to add a bit on um, yeah, yeah. Um, his comment, maybe. Yeah, uh, but I wonder, is the problem uh, that it's not fashionable enough? Or is it really, like you were saying, like is it user-friendly? Do people want to uh, look through Google um, on their eyes? Don't they want to have, to, to, mm -hmm. to have more agency when they're doing it? And I have to say I'm a bit skeptical about what you presented. Okay. Not that I'm skeptical about technology even though I'm not from the field, but I'm a social scientist. So, yeah, I wonder, I wanted to ask you if you um, are consulting with social scientists in your project, if they're involved and, yeah, if, mm, I, yeah. and tell you that in my opinion, I think it's very important yeah, because yeah, like sure. the first comment also, do men really want to not be in control about bar uh, of their barbecue? So before we start like building and designing these things, why not maybe use technology to design things to, to resolve problems that exist already for humanity and not thinking about things that will be like this. And, I mean, I'm not, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not trying to kill creativity here, no. but just, yeah. No, but just, just what, uh, what I was mentioning as the example of, uh, of this resource, resourceful aging project that's really looking into how can a resource for, just for older, older people that use all kind of things normal things not technology or not uh, connected things to yeah maybe a kind of a paper clip for uh put, yeah i cannot give the good examples but they really start using adding some measuring of what's happening uh, as a technology to understand what's happening and then create new products that that really fit into these habits of people and um, and yeah in in in, in our uh, yeah in our lab and in the way in the in the uh, in the, our faculty, uh, yeah, this this is this is the key key thing of course to to look in these human factors and in sociology, sociology, and I will definitely look into that kind of stuff also. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really now more looking into what happens. This is happening. These kind of technologies. What will will it, it? It is especially provoking these kind of discussions. And also, the barbecue was more like a, a discussion piece to see what what will it be when you act. How can you make something that's not based on the technology, but more like looking into this thing? And yeah, yeah. But it, it, that's that's my goal more and then try to yeah provoke these kind of discussions also. Also, I have yeah. prepared one thing, and I will definitely get back to you, the audience, because I w I thought it was really striking that you look at how uh, things change our behavior, or actually that we change our behavior when we interact with things. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of one morning that I sat in a cinema, and uh, because I did cinema studies, um, and I learned that people who saw a movie for the first time, they hid behind their chairs because they were so scared that this train would run over them. So there, it was actually a screen, a thing, uh, but it was projecting a riding train, and people were so much changing their behavior because of the information it would 
come to them. So I think this long-lasting interaction of people with things, changing their behavior, adapting to it, um, is very much interesting and you take, you're take you focusing on the next level or another shape mm -hmm. of things that give us so complex information mm -hmm. that we you know, even have to think about this twin thing and the, the po possible yeah. unknown yeah. whatever thing. Mm -hmm. So thank you for this uh, yeah. uh, insight. So I yeah. think it's good to we look at it, especially with different disciplines as we do here at the Digital Society School. Uh, maybe um, I saw another finger that, that was there at the back. When, yes, I remember you. So. Hello, uh, my name is Annie and I studied philosophy and management before. Okay, and uh, I would also want to second for the uh, social psychology mm -hmm. uh, point of view. For example, if you give the bike the, the ability to feel, to think for itself, wouldn't it wonder like, oh, okay, why is my maker put me into this ba place? Okay, why do I want to be ridden by human or this sort of things? Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, so my question would be like, for you, what would be your vision, like your ideal world in the things that could predict? Is, is there a boundary? Okay, for example, it can predict the weather or only giving us the statistics or you want more of it? Like what, what kind of... Uh, things uh, are you looking forward to yeah. oh uh ideals yeah i'm well I, there's one one th yeah I'm, I'm really also curious in what what will happen when this become more and more a thing on its own or things as species or what what will happen if uh, if they have their own their own role post-human uh, i think that's all kind of interesting concepts but still have to find out what it will mean and how will yeah. I think interesting if it's that we are in control but also can use stuff but also uh, it's becoming black boxes so how can we understand what's happening so my in my uh, ideal world yeah I think that's that's hard to say I'm not really that much into ideal <laughs> ideal worlds but but I hope it will not overrule us <laughs> in that sense um, and that we start that we keep keep our own um, agency there um, but it's very hard already now to understand how things work and what what kind of decisions are taken and we have now all these discussions about privacy and stuff I, I do this but it's more that all this uh, we had last week we had Facebook that really uses privacy to gain more uh, agency on its own or may more power on its own and now we have Google today like yesterday I didn't really dive into what they they really uh, propose now so yeah we are, we are I hope we can also use these kind of things to to work for us to understand the world better. Maybe that would be my ideal. But yeah, mm, that's a nice answer. Um, I see some finger. <laughs> yes, <laughs> gentlemen. It kind of adds to the question before. Um, so there is this famous research that was done by Clifford Nas. I don't know if you remember Clippy from Microsoft yeah, in yeah, Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously it had positive feedback always and people hated it mm -hmm. and he in his research he actually gave Cl uh, Clippy uh, negative emotions so he would you know stand with the people like hey look at how bad the service of Microsoft is etc and then it would uh, increase the acceptance rate of Clippy so mm. if you talk about partnerships um, would the bike have a day off or like an off day sure. and say I don't want to yeah. ride yeah. and would that enrich the partnership in your opinion or is partnership in your opinion just like always in a pink cloud you know everything great and no, 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 flowers no definitely not <laughs> no 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 yeah yeah you should get give the bike a break sometimes but uh, yeah but that's a, I think that's a very interesting discussion here also who is is, is it always in in uh, is the, the thing then always yeah uh, working for the human, or are we more like uh, evil, equally uh, at a certain moment? That's an interesting. And what what does that mean? Yeah, I'm I'm not I've not come to my final conclusion there, <laughs> um, but I think that's one of the bigger bigger questions that we have. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but <laughs> it's kind of like he proves that uh, he he proved like that we also need negative emotions yeah, to yeah, actually yeah, accept yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, things. Yeah. Is that something you look into? 
Yeah, I will definitely look into this kind of thing. So, but, um, I yeah, um, there's I have tried to also buy, put some boundaries about my research. You have the whole field of human re, uh, human computer robotic interfaces and how that works, and I will look into that. But I don't want to start a whole research in that field. So it will, I will check it out. But uh, yeah, in 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 my yeah, I have to understand this first before. I, and there are so many aspects already here. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, good. Let's make a final question uh, for the time. But definitely, I just want to say, it's a lot to say here. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I don't like, I don't like football. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so final question. Uh, so at first I had a similar question like the previous people, how these kind of technologies would increase our distancing from very human tasks. But then you mentioned privacy. Do you believe that... Um, when we talk about predictive uh, technologies, obviously they would need people's behavior first or recording people's behavior first. Do you believe that this kind of privacy would be a barrier for these kind of technologies to emerge? Mm, no, not per se, but I didn't really think about that much. But <laughs> um, no, yeah, I th and maybe maybe even, even, even the other way around. Yeah, I have to think, think that more, or work that out a little bit more, but no. Uh, you have all these new regulations and GDPRs and stuff, uh, but that wouldn't, yeah. You, I think that's more like a, a constraint that you can can work with than that it will will limit something or something. It it shouldn't it shouldn't be at least. And yeah, also the GDPR has all kind of in uh, un unintended consequences. Uh, so there's a lot to say about that. But it, the the whole mindset is good, I think. But uh, yeah. No, I don't think it's a boundary. Uh, it's not uh, not a, a blocker or something for it for anything. And more like, uh, yeah, what I say. Is that yeah. because you believe that uh, people sharing that data online is a different action than just interacting with technology, and people would be more willing to give that up? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm hoping that we don't build things that try to let people give up their. Uh, agency or privacy or whatever. So we really should be considering what what's really the uh, the intention uh, and the and the benefit for the the human uh, aspect. So I think that that should be the the, the boundary. And there's, there was a little discussion. You have this guy Tristan Harris or something. I was listening to a podcast. And um, it's really about rethinking the 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 the, the, the systems behind this kind of. Uh, models that we have now that's a little bit different maybe different presentation maybe <laughs> but yeah we really should rethink that kind of reframe that kind of stuff and that's that's more important than now thinking about this what what will it mean for data share and privacy i think yeah okay, okay. thank you yeah. i want to wrap up this uh, part of the program <laughs> right. but we will definitely um have another mic drop in the one month okay uh so It works. So thank you, Iskander. I uh, give a warm, warm yeah. applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And also thank you for participating in this this discussion. Thank you so much. And let's continue with more drinks, some music, uh, and I hope to see you back in one month because we do have these mic drops every month. Uh, these are master classes and the topics. Uh, yes, actually, thank you. Four weeks, everyone, every month. Um, and check the website for the for the next upcoming events. Uh, who knows who? What's the next one? Because I personally don't. Sorry, no. Um, yeah, Annika. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes, cool. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but I did anyway. So you can tell it much more better than me because um, Marai is going to give the next one to so Marai. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to keep it really short, actually, because uh, and it's also from the top of my head, and I'm, I didn't prepare it yet, but it will be about images as research data, actually. There you are. And um, because I, I think I want to make a plea and drop the mic at the end for uh, 
the usage of uh, subjective images because they are subjective, uh, how many, uh, whatever you, however you look at it, to make a plea for using images more as a research material for designers, but also for uh, design researchers. And uh, yeah, I'm starting up this uh, my own PhD about things related to that topic, so I can tell you something about that. And uh, I can give you some background information about the history of the use uh, of using images in research and how I think it can be projected in our digital connected Instagramming future. Mm -hmm. So I hope to see you uh, next week then. Yes, next month. Next month. Next month. Yes. Okay, thank you.